there is the grainer curves that they dive their way down through. You don't really get an impression of the gradient, but you certainly get an impression of the change of direction from that shot. The cars flick one way and flick the other. And that's just guide you through uh, the starting grid there. And the pole position goes the way of Team ABBA Racing at the number 88 car, which should be Sam Neary, we believe, for this race. And alongside is JMH Automotive, the Lamborghini of John Seal. Row two of the grid for Simon Green Motorsport, it's Lucky Kira with his Lamborghini, and for company, it is the uh, Porsche 935 of Richard Chamberlain. Nice to see Richard back in the championship. The next row of the grid is uh, row number three. That's where we see the 61 car of John Dillon, his Lamborghini, alongside them is Raw Motorsport, which is the Radical RXC, which will be Steve Burgess for this race. And row four of the grid is number 18, Michael Igo with his Lamborghini, alongside number four, which is Graham Tilly with the Nissan Nismo GTR, or Godzilla, as it's also known. Row five of the grid, that is going to be the first of our Balfe Motorsport cars that we've got, but that's the GT3 spec McLaren, that is Stuart Proctor, and alongside it's the number nine, Top Cats Racing Lamborghini, which will be Jensen Lund for this race. The sixth row of the grid, as we move on to Row number six will be the number 96 car from Stanbridge Motorsport, Chris Kemp, and alongside is number 34, which will be Richard Marsh with his Porsche. And then we move on to row number seven. Row seven is Stanbridge Motorsport. Fraser Smart will start, and alongside is number 35 for Luger Motorsports, which is uh, Nick Phelps. The eighth row of the grid is 67. That's Orange Racing, powered by JMH. That will be Josh Jackson at the wheel of the Ginetta and alongside car number 28. Hopefully it will be there. I hope so, because it had a little bit of contact early on in qualifying, which broke the drive shaft. And that is, we saw the interview from him earlier on, Paul Bailey, who's already had to swap from the Brabham that he was hoping to race this weekend into the Ferrari. And there were question marks as to whether the Ferrari would even make the start of the race. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, and then the next row of the grid is row nine, which is 52, Deranged Motorsport, Ollie Brown. And and 212, which is Make It Happen Racing and Stephen Walton. The 10th row of the grid is 82, uh, James Guest for Feathers Motorsport. And alongside is number one, the reigning champion, which is uh, Simon Orange at the wheel of the Ginetta. Next row of the grid is Scott Sport uh, with uh, alongside 24-7 Motorsport. The 12th row of the grid is Paddock Motorsport and the second of the Bolf Motorsport cars. We move on to the next row of the grid, which is Fox Motorsport and the Century Motorsport machine. Uh, Veluga and Signature RV Paddock Motorsport line are up uh, there in 32nd position on the grid on the outside of row number 16. Row number 17, we still keep flicking through them all. Very, very large grid that we've got here over the course of this Donington. Park weekend and on row 17 of the grid it should be Whitebridge Motorsport the number 72 car alongside 29 which is Gemini Motorsport and Andy Roby he had problems though in qualifying so that could have caused him uh, a few issues then it's Century Motorsport before we then see Greystone GT another new team to the championship uh, the, the Marcos Mantis of Charlotte Gilbert had problems in free practice so only did a few laps in qualifying and then the back row of the grid problems for both of those Peter Jackson in the Vector Motorsport Lotus Elise lost his brakes and didn't take part in qualifying and as we mentioned the uh, replacement car for Enduro Motorsport and Morgan Tilbrook sees the number 66 car lineup at the tail end of the field. So that's the way that they all line up. There is the pole sitting car in the hands of Richard Neary. I said I thought it was Sam Neary, but no, that is Sam that is uh, down there talking away to Father. A thumbs up from both. Uh, they have been competing in the British GT Championship for the last year or so. Now that is John Seal that sits alongside. So it's a Group GT3 car on pole, Group GTO car for this weekend of John Seal that sits alongside. John, another driver who we saw racing in the British GT Championship last year. And it, originally his car was potentially going to run in the GT3 category uh, due to various conversations that have gone on. He has opted to run it in Group GTO for this weekend so with some Mercedes and a Lamborghini on the front row of the grid. There is the number 22 car which is one of three cars we've got from Greystone GT in the championship for this year. Each one of the Greystone drivers is paired up with a very, very capable pro driver. So that was Richard Mason's car, who is paired up at the wheel of the number 22 car with John Lancaster. That's the Richard Chamberlain Porsche 935 returning to the championship. That car is a real hybrid of cars. There's not a lot left of the original Porsche that that was built on. Uh, and it's great to see Richard back in the championship. It's also good to see that car in the championship as well, which is the Radical RXC of uh, Ben Dimmock. And for this race, at least, uh, Steve Burgess at his local track as well. Steve, born in Leicestershire, lives in Nottinghamshire, multiple Radical champion as well, moved over from uh, another championship in the UK to race in GT Cup for this season. I think they were third overall in that particular championship last year but have opted to race in GT Cup this year and have brought that Radical RXC in for uh, the very first time. Be interesting to see how they go. I think they were hugely impressed with the strength in depth that was on the grid for the course of this weekend. We've got 
numerous drivers who have raced uh, at Le Mans, including champions in the European Le Mans series. We've got two former Formula One test drivers as well, with the likes of Darren Turner and Adam Carroll. But of course, most of those are the pros, and therefore they can't take part in this sprint race. So, buzzer goes off. Countdown continues. Won't be that much longer before the grid is cleared. There is the car that will line up third on the grid, which is the Simon Green Motorsport Lamborghini Huracan GT3 of Lucky Kira. Lucky, who raced with us last year in a mixture of uh, European Cup specification Ferrari 488s, also took in a couple of races at the wheel of his Porsche as well. But it's a Lamborghini GT3 for him. Hopefully, oh, please don't tell me there are more problems with the number 66 car. That is already, as I said earlier on, the spare car because of the problems that befell Morgan Tilbrook in qualifying. So that car qualified out of session over the course of the lunch break. Hopefully that's just precautionary. Lift the bonnet, check. But whatever went wrong with the other car is not going to go wrong with this one. And yet the number 66 Mercedes ushers its way up towards the tail end right, of the field. So that is good news indeed for Morgan Tilbrook, who hasn't had a great deal of luck so far this weekend. A bit like Paul Bailey, really, with the Brabham breaking and then the Ferrari having contact and broken drive shafts. Hopefully that Ferrari has made it onto the grid. I'm just looking to see whether I can see the Ferrari. Not the easiest because they start in something like eighth uh, row of the grid. So it's really just the roof of the car that you'd be able to spot. So I'm not entirely sure that the Ferrari has made it out. Row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, the Ferrari is out. Yep, the Ferrari has made it out onto the grid. I can just, through my commentary position, pick out that the hard work has been done by the team and therefore we are indeed going to see the SB race engineering Ferrari out onto the field. So, countdown continuing. The slave batteries have just fired the engines into life. The last few team members and the other drivers that cannot take part in this race, in the case of the pros, in the case of where they are not the pro, you decide which driver is going to take part in this sprint race. We are about to very shortly get the first rolling lap underway for the start of the 2021 GT Cup Championship season here at Donington Park on the national circuit. So it's 1.9790 miles long and they'll have 25 laps to unleash this colossal grid of GT specification cars. We'll keep you up to date on who all of the group leaders are as well at any one individual point because of course it is the points you, you accumulate in your respective group that count towards the championship. So we will have on the front row of the grid, for instance, a GT3 car and a GTO car. They will both be wanting to claim the overall win, but they will both be scoring their own individual championship points in that respective group. Row 2 of the grid is a GT3 car and a GTO. Row 3 of the grid is a GT3 car and a GTO. Row 4 is two GT3 cars. Row 5 is a GT3 and the first of the cars from the GTC category. Row 6 is a GTC car and the first of the cars from the GTB category. So they really are mixed up as the... Rolling lap gets themselves underway, so we will see just one rolling lap and then the safety car will as long as he's happy that the field is correctly formed up behind, will peel its way into pit lane and we'll get the 2021 GT Cup Championship season underway with the first of two races here today, both of which will be shown live. A uh, further two races shown live tomorrow as will the whole season be available to you to watch live. For the second event of the season will see us down at Brands Hatch on the Grand Prix circuit on the 1st of May, which at the moment is scheduled to be a capacity grid. Uh, I think the capacity grid is something like 42 or 44 cars at Brands Hatch on the Grand Prix circuit, but there are already four, five, six reserves that cannot make it onto the grid. So full is that one going to be. After Brands Hatch, we then move in early June to the third race weekend of the season where we go to Snetterton in Norfolk on the 300 circuit. Then early July for uh, event four of the season at Alton Park on the international circuit and then in August we head to Silverstone on the Grand Prix circuit back here to Donington Park on the Grand Prix circuit in late September for the sixth race weekend of the season and we round the season out back in Norfolk at Snetterson on the 300 circuit in early October the 2nd and 3rd of October so there's plenty of racing coming up seven racing weekends four races in total over each one of those so 24 rounds for the championship and the total from all championship rounds count as well there are no drop scores in this series so you have to remain consistent all the way through so cars will be trying to weave from side to side to try and build the temperatures in those brakes in particular and the control Pirelli slick tyres that they will all be running in these conditions control fuel as well they all run Sunoco fuel the lights are still illuminated on the safety car. It's slowing the pack up now as it starts to work its way down the straight and in towards the braking area 
for the Robert Chicane. The lights go out, which means we are going to be good to be going racing this time through for 25 minutes for our first of two races here today at Donington Park on the national circuit. It is Richard Neary and John Seal on the front row of the grid, the Mercedes and the Lamborghini respectively. And as we get the 2021 season underway for the GT Cup Championship, the lights will go out and they now charge their way up towards Redgate Corner for the first time. Richard Neary in the Mercedes on the left of your screen, but John Seal almost a bit of contact between the pair of them as John Seals tries to squeeze the Mercedes but it is Richard Neary who sticks his elbows out there and has the early lead of the race John Seal slots her into second position he's under pressure from Lucky Kira who's looking to try and sneak through on the top of Hollywood and down through the crane of curves but John Seal got that move covered off so it's still Lamborghinis two and three John Seal from Lucky Kira Richard Chamberlain on, on his return to the championship sits there in fourth position at this stage but everybody is by the look of things safely through first couple of corners in this enormous field that we've got but problems for John Seal I'm afraid was that a spin coming out all ah, right John Seal and Lucky Kira must have made contact coming out of the old hall corner that got the old hairpin I should say rather because John Seal slowed and Lucky Kira is backwards in the gravel by the look of things so that could possibly bring about the requirement for a safety car early on in this one and that would be an enormous shame what it has done surely is really aid the cause of Richard Neary in the lead of the race who should have been able to pull away quite substantively with the cars in second and third place sort of tripping over each other in the early stages of the race so over the start finish line will go the race leaders here's John Seal you can see trying to pick his way at the wheel of that Lamborghini back through the pack but there was a waved yellow flag on the approach to the S's so he needed to make sure he got that job done before he got to that yellow flag so so they charge their way in towards Redgate Corner there is the number 41 car also with problems. That's Fraser Smart that's had a spin. That's coming out of the Robert Chicane at the wheel of his Lamborghini. So a couple of the Lamborghini GT3 cars and that car, the Trojan Super Trofeo car, all having problems in the early stages of this one. But the race still continues. And has everybody made it through at the end of the first lap? Lucky Kira's car, I do fear, might not have come through. Yes, it did. It was just a long, long way down off the order. Michael Igo going side by side with Graham Tilly's Nissan should sneak through on the inside as he turns his way in towards Coppice Corner. So Michael Igo goes through at the wheel of the GT3 number 18 Lamborghini and he can now set his sights about trying to close in on the blue and day glow green Lamborghini of John Dillon that lies ahead. John, very quick driver, great to see him back in the series, John Dillon. And certainly was a force to be reckoned with last year he won the gt cup sprint championship and won the gtc title overall he's sitting right on the rear bumper of the porsche of richard chamberlain so richard chamberlain running in second position now because of the problems of those lamborghinis of john seal and lucky kira he's a hugely experienced driver has been racing for a great great number of years didn't quite grab the apex there though down in the old hairpin and that is now going to put him under pressure from John Dillon John Dillon's car is a GT3 spec car so Richard Chamberlain still leading group GTO even if the Lamborghini gets past him he will still be in the lead of that group uh, and in fact even if John Dillon gets through Michael Igo gets through and Graham Tilly gets through he would still be leading and four to lose three places overall in the race but still be leading his group Richard Chamberlain so he's got a bit of a buffer between himself and the Black Radical that sits behind because that's the car that's second in the group so down the straight in towards a Robert Chicane Richard Chamberlain has enough grunt in a straight line to see off the GT3 spec Lamborghinis that sit behind the first of which is John Dillon who gets a better exit this time coming out of the Robert Chicane and might try something on the run down in towards Redgate Corner Richard Chamberlain, I think again in a straight line, just has enough power. Michael Igo though throws one up the inside of John Dillon as they vie for what is third and fourth place. Can't quite make it through though, Michael Igo. Didn't compromise his run too much coming out of Redgate and down onto top Hollywood. So he's still right behind the Lamborghini that lies ahead and not so much under the pressure from the big Nissan in the hands of Grant Tilly that sits behind. Up towards Redgate corner. This is Craig Wilkins in his Group GTA car fighting away with the number 67 car, which for this race is Josh Jackson. That's actually for the lead of Group GTA as well. So those two cars needing to keep pressing on. The 35 car also involved in a great, great battle. Right behind him is the reigning champion from last year, the wheel of the number one McLaren, which is going to be Simon Orange. For the 25 minutes, we've got just over 20 that remain at the moment. Simon Orange is feeling the pressure here. He's got the number 
26 car right behind him, really asking a few questions is Mo Ritson. Good to see Mo Ritson going so well. Simon Orange, if anything, just sort of bottled up, isn't he, behind the number 35 Porsche in the hands of Nick Phelps. In a straight line, the Porsche should have the legs over the GT4 spec McLarens. But our reigning champion, although that's uh, Steve Burgess that's off at the wheel of the Radical, his local circuit. The Radical's a long, long way off into the gravel trap. Is he going to be able to dig the car back out again? That looks like that's down at the old hairpin. So, not what Steve Burgess wanted. That car will also be tumbling down through the order as a result of that. The battle's out on circuit, still raging. The difficulty is, with so many cars, and we're on the national circuit, it's a busy old track here at Donington Park. See yellow flags waving at the top of Hollywood, so there's no overtaking down through the Craner curves. It does make me wonder as to perhaps whether the Radical has not made it out of the ground. There it was, it was Redgate Corner, I think the problem's for the Radical. There it is, it's now finally back on the tarmac in the hands of Steve Burgess, but will have dropped all the way down, almost towards the tail end of the field. And then we've also got some quick cars that started at the tail end of the field, trying to fight their way back up. Now, this is the fight for second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth position all together. Richard Chamberlain at the head of the queue, being shadowed by Don John Dillon, Michael Igo, then uh, Graham Tilly, and last of which will be the number 36 car in the hands of Stuart Proctor, the McLaren, who almost, almost was able to capitalise on a very slight mistake there from Graham Tilly coming out of Redgate Corner as the Nissan ran wide. So from all five being together, it's sort of a trio and then a pair, isn't it, now all of a sudden, as they tumble their way for the sixth time through the old hairpin and start to accelerate their way back up through Schwantz Curve. Richard Chamberlain still leading Group GTO, still lying second in the race and keeping the GT3 machines behind him. And this Porsche can trace its roots back to, what, the early part of the 1970s, probably as a chassis. It's hugely developed since then. There's not much of the original car that's left, but with a continuing state of development and really taking a year out last year, Richard Chamberlain, to try and fettle the car. It is working beautifully well at this stage and cars that are st substantively newer than it. Yes, they run in a different class. Yes, they have different aero packages, but in a straight line, Richard Chamberlain just has the grunt to see off the GT3 cars. It doesn't quite have the aero through the corners, but overall, there's very little to choose. Michael Igo having another little go at John Dillon, flashes the lights. John Dillon tried to turn in, saw that the other car was alongside, and Michael Igo now through up into third place overall. That puts him second in Group GT3 now. So good overtake there for Michael Igo, who has only been racing, what, for three years, I think now, Michael Igo, since we first saw him out on circuit, and has really come on leaps and bounds over the last few years with the help of the pro drivers that have been supporting him in the various championships we've seen him in. What's he going to do now about trying to attack Richard Chamberlain and trying to squeeze his way through? Richard will be calling on all of those many, many years of experience, but Michael Igo gets a slightly better exit coming out of McLean's. Can't do anything as they head up towards Coppice. Can he try and switch back on the exit? Yes, he does. So he takes a wider line in, works his way back through, but then the extra power of the Porsche might just tell for Richard Chamberlain as he comes down the straight. Chamberlain trying to attack and defend from the same time. He's got John Dillon right behind him, so he covers off the Lamborghini behind. Doesn't worry so much about the Lamborghini that's ahead. That slows John Dillon's entry into Roberts. Didn't really compromise the exit again, though, so I think he is still going to be good enough to be in fourth place by the time they get towards Redgate Corner. Graham Tilly's big Nissan. Can he outbreak the Lamborghini? He's going to go, you know. Yeah, up the inside. Through goes Graham Tilly. Great move. And now, all of a sudden, John Dillon has slipped from what was third down into fifth position and is still under pressure for that as well because the sixth place car of Stuart Proctor is not too far away. So, through the old hairpin. McLaren 750S GT3 of Stuart Proctor at the tail end of this battle that we've got. There's a big, big bid spin, and you're not going to recover from that, I'm afraid to say. And that is the number 34 car of former British Touring Car racer Richard Marsh that's in the gravel. So that is the Team Hard Porsche. Didn't quite see the start of it, but we certainly saw the end of it. And that's it for the number 34 car, Richard Marsh, who spent a few years in the touring cars, what was it, 2003 through to 2007 in the British Touring Car Championship, then moved through to British GT. But looks as though that car, yeah, firmly in the gravel trap in the middle of the Craner curve, so that car is going to be going nowhere. And there's not a great deal of assistance on that side of the circuit to try and hoist it out of harm's way. So just under 15, or just over rather, 15 minutes of the race to go.
battles on track still raging as well. This is the Porsche that's just bumped a little bit wide by the McLaren there. So rally crossing to try and recover onto the circuit. The lightest of touches as well. There wasn't a great deal uh, that uh, Nick Phelps could do. And that's going to drop him down through the order there as a result of that very slight contact. And through go what a quartet of McLarens. But I do fear, yeah, safety car is coming out. So safety car looks as though it's coming out now. Yellow flags at the marshals' posts down the straight. I think we might be going full course caution, probably because of the Porsche that sits in the gravel in the hands of Richard Marsh. Yeah, there's a safety car on standby at the end of the pit lane. It is purely now waiting for a gap in the traffic to head out onto the circuit. And I'm afraid to say, weekend goes from bad to worse for poor old Paul Bailey. His Ferrari in the pit lane, looking rather battered and bruised was that car. Bearing in mind that's the car that they weren't even expected to be racing this weekend. So safety car is out. It has not picked up the race leader. It has come out picking up the car in something like 23rd position. There is the race leader now. So Richard Neary, all of the hard work that he'd done to build what was about a four second advantage has evaporated to not a great deal. Now he was able to build that advantage because of the titanic battles that were going on between Michael Igo and Richard Chamberlain and uh, Graham Tilly, John Dillon and Stuart Proctor but all of that will evaporate to not a great deal. The one good thing for Richard Neary, his car is there. And where's the car in second? Well, he's got one, two, three, four, four back markers between himself and the Lamborghini of Michael Igo. So when we get the race back underway, there will still be a little bit of safety margin between Richard Neary and the pressure for the lead of the race. Now, the cars between... Richard Neary and Michael Iger all look like GT4 spec cars, so it shouldn't take too long, really, for Michael Iger to work his way past them once we get the safety car period out of harm's way. And then the one thing he's then got to do is try and really attack for the lead of the race if he wants it. So just to run you down through who is leading the various groups at this stage, leading the race overall and leading group GT3 is the number 88 Mercedes of Richard Neary. Uh, leading Group GTO is the car that's in third position overall. That's the all-orange Porsche 935, the number five car in the hands of Richard Chamberlain. So the safety car is waving all of the GT4 spec cars by as well. So we are going to have Michael Igo right behind Richard Neary when we get the safety car done and dusted. Uh, leading Group GTC at the moment is Jensen Lund down in eighth position, car number nine. The Lamborghini that's new to him and the team for this year. The venerable Marcos Mantis that Top Cats have run for so many years. They've still got one out in the hands of Charlotte Gilbert, but for Warren Gilbert and Jensen Lum, it's the Lamborghini Super Trofeo spec car. Uh, car number nine in eighth place that leads Group GTC. Leading Group GTH at this stage is the number 52 McLaren, which we have seen a little bit of in this race. That is the deranged motorsport McLaren number 52 of Ollie Brown for this particular race. Ollie Brown is classified as a pro sport driver, which means that he can take part in uh, the sprint race. He can also uh, affect the qualification of the car, whereas the pros can't even qualify cars. So pro sport is a new category that's been introduced for this season. Tell you a little bit more about that over the course of this weekend. But that number 52 car leads Group GTH at this stage. And leading Group GTA is birthday boy. It's Craig Wilkins, car number 80. Uh, leads Group GTA, his Ginetta. So that picks up on all of the group leaders other than Group GTB, which is still the number 35 Porsche. We saw it sort of get nudged off a little bit wide at McLean's corner. Well, Nick Phelps still leads Group GTB, despite the fact that his car had that little issue up at McLean's corner and lost two or three places to uh, the McLarens and the Ginettas that were able to sneak their way through. So that's the order of the various groups. In fact, there is the Group GTB leading Porsche there, just heading round through shot. And the car that's second in Group GTB isn't that far behind. It's Marcus Mantis, the silver car with the light green stripes. So that could be another battle to watch as and when we get the safety car done and dusted and out of harm's way. So Richard Marsh's Porsche will be getting dealt with difficulty with where it ended up there on the inside of the old hairpin the bottom of the crane the curves is that there's no snatch vehicle that I'm aware on that side of the circuit so usually what has to happen is they throw the safety car to get the circuit vehicle the tele loader from one side of the track to the other to then get the car out of harm's way so that's what they're doing now they're dragging it into a gap that exists in the concrete wall uh, part the way down through the crane of curves and then once the car has been unhooked from the tele loader and that vehicle will need to get back to its regular position and only once it's back behind the wall will we get things going so we're going to have at least one further lap behind the safety car all of this time whilst the clock is still ticking down there are now just over 10 minutes 
of the race to go. As for the top ten, well, number 88, Richard Neary leads. Second is number 18, Michael Igo. Third is number five, Richard Chamberlain. Fourth is number four, conveniently enough, Graham Tilly. Fifth is 61, John Dillon, who say was right up there but seemed to get picked off by a few cars. Sixth place is number 36, which is Stuart Proctor in the McLaren. Seventh is number 55, John Seal. Well, considering he spun almost to the very tail end of the field, that's a great drive back through the field for the number 55 car in the hands of John Seal. So no ill effects for whatever happened between himself and Lucky Keir, and even that little bit of contact at the start with Richard Neary as they went down towards Redgate Corner. So from second down to the back of the field and back to seventh, all within 15 minutes, a busy old race. Uh, eighth place is the number nine car, which is going to be uh, Jensen Lund for this particular race. Uh, ninth place is 96, which is Chris Kemp at the Wheel of the Sunbridge Motorsports at Lamborghini, and completing the top ten. Uh, is number 52 car, as I said, which is the group GTH leader, which is the Aston Martin of Ollie Brown. So that gives you the top 10 as well, as the safety car is working its way round through Schwantz Curve. Light's still on at this stage. Now, it would usually be down the uh, exhibition straight on the running towards Robert Chicane, where the lights will get extinguished on the safety car. And that's the sign to all the competitors that we are going to go green at the end of a lap. Now, are we going to see the safety car in on this lap, I do fear it might be, yeah, there's in the background, just see the telehandler moving off from one side of the circuit back to the outside again, has the call been made in time, now the difficulty is that telehandler's got to get behind the wall, I don't think we're quite going to do it on this lap, which means there'll be, I suspect, one further lap behind the safety car, no, lights go out on the safety car, so just in the nick of time. The incident is cleared, which means that we are going to go back racing. Single file restart, no overtaking until you reach the start finish line. But Richard Neary gets his foot down and gets the race back underway. Round one of the 2021 GT Cup Championship. But Michael Igo is not that far away from him. A little bit slower away was Richard Chamberlain. So he sits there in third place. Michael Igo using all of the tarmac at pit lane exit as well to try and take as wide a line in towards Redgate Corner and carry as much speed, mid-corner speed, as he possibly can down through the order that's a good fight that's going on that's for the leader group gth i think there is it yeah the two aston martins together ollie brown fighting away with james guest that could be something that's well worth watching out for as the leading pack head down through the old hairpin where are the two aston martins there they are their white car leads group gth right behind it is the white and blue car with its day glow orange flashes so that is a fight for uh, the lead of the group so that will be what 10th and 11th places overall leading pack up towards McLean's corner, turning their way in towards the blind entry, double apex right-hander, difficult corner is McLean's corner, there go the two Astons, yes, yeah, still fighting away, Lamborghini's trying to side their way past them, which I think is another car that's coming up from the tail end of the field, Lucky Kira, after his spin, all the way down towards the tail end of the field, has got himself involved with those two Aston Martins, but it's cleared both now, which means the battle for the leader group GTH, the GT4 spec cars, is back on once more. Ollie Brown under pressure from James Guest, whilst for the lead of the race, Richard Neary is under pressure from Michael Igo. Just 0.5 of a second separated them as they came over the start finish line to chalk lap number 13 into the book. Seven minutes still remaining as they tumble their way back downhill into the braking area for the old hairpin. Now, longer races, the pit stop races tomorrow, have that extra dynamic of not just the pit stop but also the fact that the cars will be handed over to separate drivers we'll see that over the course of the pit stop race later on this afternoon and the pit stop race tomorrow for Richard Neary and Michael Igo they can sort of size each other up for the remainder of this race and try and understand as to where their car might have a slight advantage over the other great fight going on for third fourth fifth and sixth place still. Richard Chamberlain has done a really good job at the wheel of that Porsche of keeping at bay the aspirations of the GT3 cars that are really queuing up behind now. Richard Chamberlain leads group GTO, the open spec cars, but then he's got four GT3 spec cars right behind him. First of which is Graham Tilly, the next of which is John Dillon, and then Stuart Proctor who's now coming under pressure from a rejuvenated John Seal having spun towards the tail end of the field. The number 55 Lamborghini looks up the inside of the McLaren. Can he squeeze his way through and take the position away? Yes, he has. So John Seal now back inside the top six. And what can he do from there? Graham Tilly also attacks Richard Chamberlain. And, ah, right, problems, problems, I'm afraid to say, for the Porsche because Graham Tilly goes through and ahead of Richard Chamberlain. And Richard Chamberlain all of a sudden didn't put up a lot of fight, did he? He'd been holding those GT3 cars forever. But all of a sudden, Graham Tilly, John Dillon, Stuart Proctor, John Seal, all are through and ahead now. 
And I do fear that the body language of the car of Richard Chamberlain's Porsche suggests that all is not well. And yeah, he's lost a further place there as well as Jensen Lund goes through. Lucky Kira might pick him off also by the end of the race as well. Or the end of this lap even. So yeah, there is Lucky Kira already right the way up onto terms with the Porsche. And again, no defence put up by Richard Chamberlain. He'll be destined for the pit lane, I'm afraid to say, I think, at the end of this one. And that would then put into the lead of Group GTO. John Seals car, the number 55 car. It is a GT3 spec Lamborghini, but he's opted to run it in Group GTO. It's the white car that's just coming up towards Redgate Corner now. We try to hunt down this car here, the number 61, in the hands of John Dillon. So that Lamborghini now takes up the lead of Group GTO at this stage. And James Lynn, say, crawling his way around the circuit and tumbling all the way down and has indeed, yeah, come into the pit lane at the end of the lap. So less than five minutes remaining. Graham Tilly up into fourth, uh, third position, I should say. John Seal up into fifth position and now leading Group GTO at the wheel of that number 55, Lamborghini. Fantastic soundtrack they make as well, these big GT cars as they thunder their way around the Donington Park National Circuit. Now, how much further up through the order can John Seal get? We know the car and the driver's got the pace because, say, he qualified outside of the front row this morning. It was a stellar lap that was put in by Sam Neary, who is not racing in this race. It's Father Richard that's opted to take the first race in. So Sam was the best part of 1.6 seconds quicker than anybody in qualifying, but John Seal was the best of the rest. Uh, and that, I'm afraid to say, is, well, there we are, a loose wheel has fallen off, and that looked like the number 96 Lamborghini. That's the Stanbridge Motorsport car of Chris Kemp that's gone into the gravel up at Coppice Corner. He felt something was wrong, yeah, and there's the wheel. It's the front left, isn't it, that's come off the Lamborghini. So there is going to be nothing Chris Kemp can do about that. He is out of the race with three and a bit minutes to go up towards the braking area for Redgate Corner that's Craig Wilkins now this is for the lead battle of Group GTA again once more the two Ginettas both of them run to Super Cup specification but Craig who celebrates his 50th birthday this weekend the number 80 car that red car with its day glow yellow flashes coming under enormous pressure from the number 67 Ginetta of Josh Jackson that sits directly behind. Josh Jackson, remember, is a reigning champion in GT Cup. The overall championship he grabbed last year when he was partnered with Simon Orange. The two of them working together again this year. They've set up this new team as well. Orange Racing powered by JMH, their technical partners. And at the moment, the Orange powered by JMH Ginetta is asking a few questions of the Scott Sport prepared car. Whilst those two are battling for the lead of Group GTA, James Guess, who's ahead of them at the wheel of the Aston Martin, is desperate to try and close back up on the leading car in Group GTH, which is the number 52 Aston Martin that he's just dropped away from over the course of the last few laps. So two and a half minutes to go. John Seal's progress continues. Up to fourth position now at the wheel of the number 55 Lamborghini. He is still less than a couple of seconds adrift of the third place car of Graham Tilly so might not be done and dusted yet for John Seal you know well, then Tilbrook who started at the real tail end of the field still working his way through but the race leader has now got all of this traffic to try and deal with Richard Neary bouncing over the kerbs catching up with some of the GT4 specification cars he's going to have to weave his way through and pass them is he going to clear them all by Redgate Corner Michael Igo goes one side of one back marker one side of the other Richard Neary splits the pack and then tries to get around the outside of Morgan Tilbrook's GT4 spec Mercedes at the wheel of his GT3 car the extra power the extra aero tells so Richard Neary now has got at least three more back markers between himself and Michael Igo so still a couple of seconds separated them as they came over the start finish line but Richard Neary has managed the traffic well there and has made sure that he clears cleared it all before they got towards Redgate Corner so he wasn't compromised on the run through Craner Curves which is not the easiest places to try and overtake even if you are in a more powerful and more aerodynamically efficient car with greater levels of downforce so that will have aided the cause of Richard Neary who will be heading over the start finish line to start what is now likely to be the last lap of the, lap, uh, of the race next time through so down the straight up towards the braking area for Redgate Corner. James Guess and Craig Wilkins, both of whom raced together in Group GTH category last year. Craig's moved through to Group GTA and he's now running side by side with the Group GTH Aston Martin, desperate to try and hang on to the lead of the group. But it's Aston Martin from Ginetta, McLaren from Ginetta. But those are cars that run in both Group GTH 
8, Group GTA, Group GTH and Group GTA are the order that those cars run in. So it's not all full position, that quartet that you see there. As for our race leader, should now be on to the final lap of the race. Can we usher John Seal, the number 55 car, any further up? The car he needs to try and get past is going to be Graham Tilley's Nissan. You can see that Burgundy and Daglo Nissan working its way through the hordes of Group GTH cars there. The Aston Martin, the two McLarens, and then the Group GTB Porsche, which I think will be David Franklin for this race. But Graham Tilly, I think, might just have enough in hand to try and fend off the aspirations of John Seal and hang on to what will be third place overall. At the moment, it is Group GT3 cars first, second, and third place. The clock ticks to zero. Richard Neary works his way for the final time up towards the braking area for the Robert Chicane. Flicks right, flicks left. He still might have uh, uh, Andy Roby's Marcus Mantis to deal with on the sprint to the line, but Richard Neary has done enough to claim top honours in the first round of the 2021 GT Cup Championship here at Donington Park. Michael Igo comes through and finishes in second position. Who's going to be third? It is Graham Tilly, who's just going to hang on to third position. John Seal has got involved with one of the GT4 cars, I'm afraid to say, and that charge back through the field is not going to happen for John Seal. And the car that he made contact with I think might have been Mark Hopton's car. Mark having his first ever motor race here today. And yeah, John Seal's car has come to rest backwards in the gravel trap at the very final corner. Mark Hopton, who I think was involved, limped his car immediately in towards the pit lane and therefore didn't take the chequered flag. So it's going to be Graham Tilly in third position. John Dillon in fourth place. It's going to be Stuart Proctor in fifth and Lucky Kira who also had problems on the first lap, who finishes in sixth place. Uh, we'll pick up on the rest of the group winners as the battles still continue over the start-finish line. That is the lead battle for Group GTA sorted as uh, through comes Craig Wilkins to claim top honours in that just outside of the top ten, but there's still cars to take the chequered flag and then we'll run you down through the full order. But what a start to the weekend for father and son pairing, Richard and Sam Neary. They claim top honours in the first race of the weekend for the GT Cup Championship. Michael Igo finishing in second place and Graham Tilly in third, making it a GT3 category. One, two, three here at Donington Park. Richard Neary trundling his way down the pit lane. And of course, all of these cars will be spanner checked and prepped and will be ready again for the pit stop race that is scheduled to take place later on this afternoon. We are going to be going live on the stream around about uh, 10 past five, there or thereabouts. But maybe just keep your eye on it a little bit earlier because if we run efficiently to timetable, they will start the race that little bit earlier. So cars trundling their way down the pit lane. We should hopefully be able to rattle through some results with you just to confirm the results for our first race, the provisional results of which, of course, they are at the moment. The official results will all be confirmed a little bit later on. So the results are Team Abbott and Richard Neary take the win. Second place is Michael Igo for WIP Motorsport. And third place is the Triple M Motorsport Tech Speed Nissan in the hands of Graham Tilly. Fourth place goes the way of John Dillon for Scott Sport. Fifth place is uh, Balf Motorsport and Stuart Proctor. And sixth place is uh, Lucky Kira for Simon Green Motorsport. Then it was the radical pairing of uh, Steve Burgess, who shares that car with Ben Dimmick that were in seventh place. Top Caps Racing Lamborghini was eighth. And the Deranged Motorsport Aston Martin was in ninth position. Head of Feathers Motorsport, Deranged Motorsport taking the Group GTH honours with that one. That gives you the top 10 in 11th place. It was the leading car home in Group GTA, which was a Scott Sport Ginetta in the hands of Craig Wilkins. Uh, then it was the two uh, orange racing powered by JMH uh, cars, the McLaren ahead of the Ginetta. Veluga Motorsport and the Porsche in 14th place and the Balf GT4 McLaren in 15th. It was more McLarens in 16th and 17th for Paddock Motorsport pairing uh, with Fox Motorsport in their Ginetta finishing in 18th place. The Top Cats Marcus Mantis of Charlotte Gilbert was 19th and Veluga Racing Porsches came home to finish in 20th position. The Make It Happen Racing Ginetta was there in 21st head of Gemini Motorsport which was Andy Roby's Marcus Mantis in 22nd and I think that was the last car that sort of remained on the lead lap in reality or just got pipped on the way to the line. We saw um, the JMH Automotive car have that spin, John Seal, but he will have been still classified. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, hopefully, there's not too much damage to that car. We should be able to get him back out for our pit stop race a little bit later on this afternoon. But for GT Cup, as the cars are making their way back into the pit lane, that is all for the moment from the GT Cup here at uh, Donington Park. We will make our way down into the pit lane and catch up with some of the stories so that we can bring you updates on some of the cars that had problems later on. We are scheduled to get the next stream underway 
at around about, it's going to be 20 past five. So 17.20 will be back on live stream for our pit stop race. So from all of us here at Donington Park and the GT Cup team, hope you enjoyed the first race of the season. We'll catch you later on today. Until then, goodbye. Hey.